Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Light out of the darkness, light one single flame to night will glow throughout the earth. Light, behold his glorious light guiding us through the night. Give thanks for the Messiah's birth. Give thanks for the Messiah's birth. Light out of the darkness, light. One single flame tonight will glow through. Light, behold his glorious light, guiding us through the night, give thanks for Messiah's birth, give thanks for
thousand years ago, an angel of the Lord came down from heaven with good tidings of great joy. The shepherds left the hillside to find the wondrous sight. And just like them, way back then, on that first Christmas night, oh, we need a little good news, a little peace on earth, some glory in the highest, and joy to the world. Oh, come on, all ye faithful, and celebrate the truth. The baby in the manger came to rescue me and you. Oh, that's good news. And everybody needs a little good news. Good news. Story of that night and the baby born to save makes all the difference. In this old world today, the hope that filled the manger was the hope upon the cross. John 3.16 says, just believe, and that's good news because, oh, we need a little good news, a little peace on earth, some glory in the highest, and joy to the world. Oh, come on, all ye faithful, and celebrate this truth. The baby in the manger came to rescue me and you. Oh, that's good news. And everybody needs a little good news. Good news, yeah. Go tell it on the mountain, cause it's good news. Somebody tell somebody, cause it's good news. Go tell it on the mountain, cause it's good news. And everybody needs a little good news. Tell it on the mountain, the baby in the manger is a Good news, we need a little good news, a little peace on earth, some glory in the highest, and joy to the world. Oh, come on, all ye faithful, and celebrate this truth. The baby in the manger came to rescue me and you. Oh, that's good news, a little peace. On earth, some glory in the highest and joy to the world. Oh, come on, all ye faithful, and celebrate this truth. The baby in the manger came to rescue me and you. Oh, that's good news, and everybody needs a little good news. Oh, that's good. Good news. Tonight is taken from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, and this is probably a scripture that you would expect to hear tonight. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he had belonged to the house and to the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. 
Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. All those who know that this is the word of God, say amen, amen, and amen. Splendor with royal robes and crown of gold. He could have had a mighty castle to rule and reign around the world. and proud. He was coming for the least of us, the lost, the down and out. This was heaven pouring out its love to everyone. Oh, the lowliest of kings invites the lowliest of us to come. have come with regal anthems and spelled his name across the sky but all he had was simple starlight and a young girl's lullaby it wasn't in a noble It was not to holy men, but the good news came to shepherds out in the fields of Bethlehem. He wasn't looking for the powerful, he wasn't reaching for the rich and proud. He was coming for the least of these, the lost. The down and out. This was heaven pouring out its love to everyone. Oh, the lowliest of kings invites the lowliest of us. Is it 
looking for the rich and proud. He is here for the least of us, the lost, the down and out. This is heaven pouring out its love to everyone. Oh, the lowliest of kings invites the lowliest of us. The mightiest of kings invites the lowliest of us. The mightiest of kings invites the lowliest of us to come. Just come. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are blessed to be here tonight, and we, we come to worship you, to give you praise, to give you honor, to glorify your holy name. Lord, it's a special time of celebration for us as Christians. We're celebrating uh, the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, as he traveled from heaven to earth, to come, to live, to die, to rise again with the promise of coming back for his church. Father, we, we're really so blessed to be Christians. We're so blessed to be believers. We're so blessed that somebody on the journey of our life told us about Jesus Christ and what he can do in our lives and how he can change us. And so, Father, we gather tonight as Christians to worship you. Lord, it's sort of been an awful year, and we've been affected by the virus. And, Lord, uh, we come tonight and are still affected by the virus. And Father, it's just really strange because tonight we also come affected by an unusual rainstorm with great winds. Lord, we're, we're, we're starting to feel like, uh, I don't know what could happen next. We're maybe a little bit feeling like Job because in our own personal lives, we all have aches and pains and other issues we're dealing with. But Lord, we do know this, that you are faithful and true and you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we do know that you are in charge. And Father, we just pray that as we worship you tonight, whether we're here at New Life or whether we're home live streaming or whether we watch our service later on, down the road in the next day or two, Father, we just feel that we know that you're with us, your power and presence is with us, your healing power is with us. And Lord, we know that you'll get us through these difficult times. We pray for those that are sick, those that are especially sick because of the virus. We ask that your healing hand would touch them. Father, we pray for those that are going through grief at this time. We ask that you would comfort them. Father, we're, we're thankful for a vaccine that we have and we pray that that would be so effective that, Lord, that people would be healed and touched by not only your power, but the power of, of the knowledge of medicine. Father, we uh, thank you for each of us in this room and each of us home listening. We pray, Father, that as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, Lord, if we celebrate it alone, if we sit at our house alone or with our immediate family or whatever we do, we would feel the power of your presence as we worship the King of Kings and the Lord. Father, you are good to us. We just pray that you would send revival to our hearts. Forgive us of 
any of our sins or any of our misdoings. Lord, help us to continue to walk with you. We pray for our nation, the United States of America. We pray for the bitterness and the hatred that's rampant today. We pray, Father, that there would be healing in those wounds. And Lord, we just want you to use us to honor and glorify you in these days. And as someone told us that Jesus Christ loved us, that that might be the message that we communicate to our neighbors, our friends, and those around us. Lord, you are a good and a great God, and we give you praise, honor, and glory. For it's in Christ's name that we pray, and his people said, amen and amen.
thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, we do want to welcome you tonight to our our um, candle lighting service, our only service this year. Uh, we'd like you to sign the Ritual of Christian Friendship pad so that the ushers are distributing at this time. Uh, please sign your name and any information on that pad. Uh, we sort of keep up with you, and, and uh, that is really helpful to us. So um, they're handing them out now. Also, um, I need to announce that if you did not, when you enter, get a candle, um, raise your hand now because this will be the only chance that you have to get a candle before the candle lighting service. So if you did not get a candle, keep your hand up until one of the ushers comes and, of course, um, gives you a candle. You should probably also received as you entered a poinsettia booklet. That's a booklet that has the flowers that um, you might have purchased the poinsettia in memory or in honor of loved ones. So please take the booklet home and uh, you might know some of the people that are memorialized or honored. So you might want to just look through that and take it. And then if you did purchase a flower, um, you're welcome to take your poinsettia home with you. Uh, not on the manger level because they're fake and, and they're not near as nice as the real ones right now. So please take your flower home with you. And if you didn't purchase one and you know someone that's sick or uh, could use a blessing and want to take one home, just let us know. And uh, you're more than welcome um, to do that. So that's there before you. Um, we'd um, just like to... And I, I never know where to, how to do this, um, but there's so many people involved that has helped make our holiday the, the very best that it could be under the circumstances. Um, there's people that worked on our set here for tonight, the set outside, there's the musicians, um, there's the ushers, the secretaries, the back corner. So there's so many people, and they worked extra hard this year because it was always day to day, you know, how you'd wake up and you weren't sure what the government was going to say. Like, you know, one day they could say, go back to bed for the rest of the day. The next day they might say, oh, everything's fine. The next day, you need to wear a mask with three levels. The next day, it was with four layers. Uh, the next day, you don't have to wear a mask at all. And then the next day is we're not to have Thanksgiving or go, go do anything um, because all the politicians were using the airplanes and uh, the train. So I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, but it made it extra hard to even do holidays this year. If you remember, months and months ago, Basically, for the churches, Easter was canceled. Now, Jesus Christ still rose from the dead. We know that. But our churches were closed. And so uh, for New Life, we opened up in, in July, the first week of July, and uh, have been trying our best to keep you safe, a little distance, uh, take your temperature you're all wearing masks and look lovely and um so we're we're trying the very best we can but we especially want to thank everybody that's made our get together uh, possible because we have to do the very best that we can to to make the best of an awkward awkward situation so we are very 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 grateful um, most certainly for for all that help i do want to remind yes please I do want to remind you to stop in the bookstore in case you forgot uh, to get your favorite parent, child, or a friend a gift tomorrow. You can get it tonight after the service, 60% off. And so feel free to do that, and, and we hope you will will shop there. Um, we don't have services tomorrow, which is Christmas morning and Christmas Day. We don't. Um, Saturday, if any of you would like to stop by because you have nothing to do with your life um, and help us clean up, that would be fine. We're not going to undecorate. We're just going to clean up. The faster we clean up, the faster the staff can at least uh, get home. And so that would be Saturday morning from 8.30 on if you'd like to be, be a part of that. We'd like to have you do that. Um, and um, 
I think I covered everything. Uh, I sometimes goof off, uh, uh, don't get things quite right because everything is so different. I can't believe how different it is. And uh, I was watching the news uh, before I came over here tonight, got cleaned up, and some of the biggest churches in Philadelphia are only having 25, 30, 40 people in. And uh, it's just, it's everything is different. But tonight we're going to think about our hearts and what happened on this special celebration for us as Christians. Um, we do... Uh, God has blessed us at New Life. We're, we're managing financially, although not the best, but we're managing. And uh, so I want to remind you as you give tonight, if you could give generously, it, it's always, I don't know how you all do it, but usually when I buy Christmas gifts for people, uh, the person that's the closest to me that I love the most, that I have cared for me or I care for them, I usually get them the bigger gift, right? So I'm just reminding you tonight whose birthday this is. So and all the thousands you just spent for all these other gifts for everybody else that you give out tomorrow, remember it's his birthday and he should really receive the biggest and the best gift. First your heart and then your stewardship of your finances so the kingdom can spread. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, thank you for the joy of giving. We pray now that you would bless uh, these tithes and offerings and our Christmas offerings that the kingdom of Christ might continue to spread. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
God from whom all blessings flow. Sim all creatures here belong. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise Him above you, heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and
I certainly didn't want to even forget uh, Kim Moody and Brian and their hard work at, with bringing the animals uh, so faithfully across the border from New Jersey night after night when we met outside and Sunday. And uh, do you notice if we're missing something tonight? Well, the animals aren't here. And, it's not because they got the virus. Uh, we made sure they were masked at all times. Um, but um, the winds were too high to bring the, the uh, trailers. So the animals called and had to cancel out on us. So, and I was just like, well, what else could happen today? It's just like, what else? Um, so, I said to Miss Bonnie, maybe we should go in the nursery and bring out all the stuffed animals and just sort of stick them in there. But I had a feeling it would take away from the reverence of the moment. And so um, we just, you have to imagine, um, but uh, there was no way that we could get them here um, actually by law and insurance purposes. Um, so, but we thank everybody's effort and please uh, thank the animals for us when, uh, when you see them. Especially Joseph, he's like our headliner. Uh, you know, um, of course, Jesus is the number one, but um, Joseph has a close coming up. Uh, he's always in hot demand outside. Um, we, one Christmas, we had him in, inside here when he was younger. But if we, two Christmases, was it? If we brought him in here now, if he had to turn around, he'd wipe out the first three uh, rows of you. <laughs> so... <clears throat> I always think when when times get rough, the best thing that you can do is laugh. And if you can't laugh, then you've got a problem. And so I always like Christmas jokes especially, but I didn't want to bring you any real har har ones tonight. Um, <clears throat> but I thought I'd bring you a couple little things that have touched my heart uh, as I've, I've read them this year especially. This is called, "'Twas the Fight Before Christmas." "'Twas the fight before Christmas and all through the house. "'Not a creature was peaceful, not even my spouse. "'The bills were strung out on our table with dread "'in hopes that our checkbook would not be in the red. "'The children were fussing and throwing a fit "'when Billy came screaming and cried, "'I've been bit. "'And Mama with her skillet and I with my remote,' She said, you change one more channel and I'll grab your throat. <laughs> when on the TV there arose such a clatter, I sat up on the couch to see what was the matter. When what to my wondering eyes would appear, the cable was out. It was my worst fear. <laughs> they must have Comcast. Um, I do, so no ladders. I... <laughs> Um, the Cowboys, the Celtics, the Raiders, the Knicks, without the sports channel, I'd soon need a fix. And then in the midst of my grievous sorrow, I remember the times I had promised tomorrow, not now, my children, but at some time soon, Dad will play with you and things will be fine. Now, under conviction, I looked at my wife, where was my kindness, why all the strife? My heart quickly softened, and I now saw my task. Some love and attention was all that they had asked. I gathered my family and called them by name and told them, with God's help, I'm not been the same. We'll keep Christ in Christmas and honor his plan. No more fights before Christmas. On that, we will stand. My children's eyes twinkled. They squealed with delight. My wife gladly nodded. She knew I was right. It was the fight before Christmas, but God's love had come through. And just like he does, he made all things new. I thought that was meaningful. Then, then another little um, story I've used down through the years. Um, <clears throat> it's the story of an African young boy, and he was in the mission school. And uh, the missionary 
was teaching them at Christmas how it's a time that Christians give and why we give. Jesus Christ was their gift, the best gift. And so she was doing all that. So then when they had their Christmas party, um, the little boy came in the room and went up to the missionary teacher and gave her a present. And the present was one of the most beautiful seashells she had ever seen. And she said to her little student, um, Where, where'd you get the shell? And he named the bay that he had got the shell. And, and, and the teacher said, that's miles away from here. You actually walked that far to get the seashell for me? And the little boy looked at her and he said, long walk, part of gift. That's a good one, isn't it? And here's one of my favorite Christmas. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness, so God sent us a savior. And that's um, sort of why we're here, isn't it? We've come because God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born, to live, to die, to rise from the dead, to promise to come back, to be our savior. He gave his life to save us from our sins. You know, um, we usually do a big drama and uh, we're always looking for different presentations of the gospel. <clears throat> and over the years, um, songwriters for churches and Christian groups, they, you know, they have different themes. So I watched over the last few years the theme for each Christmas sort of change, but be very, very similar. Uh, a few years ago, um, the hot Christmas was um, a baby changes everything. I love that year. I love that whole concept. A baby changes everything. Now, of course, and I've never had a child. Uh, I've been blessed. And uh, so many of you have had many children. And you know, you know from the time that child comes, a baby changes everything. They don't always sleep at night. They don't always eat regularly. Uh, did your baby change your life a little? A baby changes everything. So that was a great theme because we went back to a, a baby changes everything. Um, then the one year, um, the theme was in many of the songs written was the cross changes everything. And I remember the first time a, a new changes everything came out, I thought, well, I thought a baby changed everything. But then we had to get new material. So then one year it was the cross changes everything. And we do know the cross changed everything everything then one year the, the theme was for some of the songs the gospel changes everything and I'm like I'm getting real confused here I thought a baby changed everything then I thought the cross changed everything now they're telling me the gospel changes everything wait you put them all together and uh, the gospel the baby the cross and they changed everything when you meet Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. You know, then something happened this year. It's, I've only seen one song written about it, but I didn't ask the choir to sing it. Um, but a virus changes everything. <laughs> How many, because of this year, your life has been changed in some way because of the virus? Raise your hand. Well, every one of you should have your hand raised because you have a mask on. And either you've come in here to rob the place or uh, the virus has freaked you out and you don't want my germs and I don't want your germs. But the virus has changed everything this year. The virus crept in January, February, and here we are a whole year in a month. 
and our lives have changed. Uh, they've just changed. We wear the, the, the fatal mask. And the other week I mentioned, uh, if you sit in a parking lot, watch people. <clears throat> and then I did it like five times right in a row afterwards. You watch them get out of their car and walk to the store and halfway through, what do they do? They stop, turn around and realize the mask is in the car. And then you see this mumbling on their lips. You know what they're saying? Stupid mask, I can't believe I have to wear that. <laughs> you know, the mask changes everything. I, I don't cook. You never know that from looking at me, but I don't cook, but the, there's no place to eat if you don't cook. And that's really true. You know, after church Sunday, you know, what do we eat? So um, I'll go to fast food. One day I had fast food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I was sick of it. I was like, oh, this is disgusting. And then, of course, they don't even let you eat inside when other restaurants did. So I carry a, uh, like a tea uh, kitchen cloth for a bib. Um, so I put a bib, I sit in the car, I eat my meals, and, you know, and then the magic sauce drops out of the bottom when you take a bite and at least I have a bib on. It's changed everything. Um, and I'm not talking about anybody or anything right now, but it's made some of us a little more touchy and irritable. You know, you, I mean, you live with people. You're probably a little more touchy with them just because uh, what, what can you do? Uh, wh where, where can you go? And then some of you have suffer grief because you've lost loved ones and or you have a loved one in the hospital and you can't go see them and and you want to go see them and your heart is breaking and then when your heart breaks nothing's right and then i'm seeing after working with people all these years uh, people um almost dying and withering away, not because of the virus, but because they can't do something or they can't go here or they can't do this or they can't do this. So I guess the theme of this, room, this Christmas should be a virus changes everything because whether we want to admit it or not, we're we're sort of changed, aren't we? And we hate it. I hate it when I'm suddenly miserable about this or that or, you know. Um, I have a difficult time sometimes when I go somewhere after church and I run into church people at the store and... Um, I've just left church, but they haven't been. And I'm thinking, oh, come on, we, people, we can't go on living like this. We can't go on living like this. And if we can do this and do this and do this, I like to think that there's a God that loves me and cares for me and is protecting me when I'm sitting in his house. We're not to be stupid, but we're to be trusting and not fearful. So I'm like looking at these phrases, the gospel changes everything, the cross changes everything, a baby changes everything, the virus changes everything. So I wanna tell you the conclusion for my life. Um, I went to church all my life, um, but I asked Christ to come into my life when I was in 10th grade. And um, I really went to a church that didn't encourage that. It was a mainline church that never talked much about giving your heart to Jesus. And then I went to summer camp, Christian camp, and I thought, whoa, I need to give my heart to Jesus. I heard the gospel. And when I heard the gospel and invited this Christ into my heart and life, 
everything changed. I was called to preach. The whole direction of my life changed from 10th grade on. When I invited Christ into my life, um, I understood what the cross was all about. What the death on the cross meant. Where Jesus died, was crucified, was then buried. And the cross changed my life. And the whole thing was, the baby changed my life. And I would hope that most of you sitting in this room can say the exact same thing that I'm saying. The gospel, the cross, the baby changed your life. Now, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. Matter of fact, if you were perfect, you would be boring and you would have no friends. So you're not going to be perfect. But aren't we going to strive for perfection? Aren't we going to strive for holiness? Aren't we going to strive to be the person that God wants you and I to be? Sure we are. Sure we are. And so we find out that the gospel, the cross, the baby changes our lives. Changes our lives. But then the tests come. And we call that the virus. The test comes and the little virus is dancing around trying to say, well, I want to see how much the baby, the gospel, and the cross has changed your life. So I'm going to modify your life because I think your name is Job. So I'm going to do some modifications here. You can't eat where you want. You can't go where you want. You have to do this. You have to wear a mask. You have to do this. You wash your hands all the time. You have to do this. The virus changes everything. But I do have news for you today. That if you have sincerely in your life personally accepted the Christ of Bethlehem, the Christ of the manger, and ask him to come into your life, he will help you. The gospel message will help you. The cross of what happened will help you to fight that virus and help you to conquer it, not just physically, but I'm also talking emotionally, mentally, you know. Um, not getting up in fear, not like, you know, and, and I can say these things, but I'm just as human as the rest of you. I wake up, and uh, example, I'll wake up and my throat will be dry. Maybe a little scratchy. And I'm like, I got the virus. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what will I do? You know, <laughs> or, or I sneeze. And I do get allergies and I do certain things pass in the air. And I'll sneeze and I'm like, I bet you I've got the virus. And I'm like, well... And then if someone, church person comes in and I'm in my office or around and I have to clear my throat, I hold it in <laughs> until they leave because I don't want them to think, oh, he's clearing his throat, he's got the virus. <laughs> I want to tell you something. The virus has changed our lives. And if you listen to TV... The other day they said it will still be a major change up till Easter. I don't know why they keep naming the holidays, but up till Easter changed our lives. But I'm telling you this, a baby, a cross, and the gospel message can change your life in such a greater way that can't compare with this virus. You take the gospel, you take the baby Jesus Christ, you take that cross, you have them. Christ dwelling in your heart and your life. And let me tell you, you get through this virus. You'll get through anything that comes, comes your way. But the most important thing is asking that baby to come into your heart and your life. You know, Christmas isn't a church thing. It's not a religious holiday. It's a relationship building event that changes our life. 
A baby changes everything. The cross changes everything for us. The gospel message changes everything for us. And you need to take those three things. And when that virus scare comes to you, when that fear comes to you, when you think, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do that, you need to face it eyeball to eyeball. You know, as a pastor, I'm like, we got through this year. I've been a pastor for 44 years. And as far as events in the church, things in the church, this has been the worst year. Worst year I've ever spent. Um, because do we do this? Well, we won't do this. Well, can we schedule a few things? Well, no, then we cancel it. Can we do this? Can we do this? And then the devil's been real good to me with giving me bad health for the last year and a half. So throw that in. As many of you all have health problems. I'm not the only one in the world. Um, but let me tell you. When the virus is trying to change things in my life, my attitude, my spirit, my goodness, my calmness, my peace, when the virus is coming in trying to do that, I need to remember the gospel changed my life. The cross changed my life. The baby changed my life. So this Christmas, I know it's going to be different for you. I know maybe you can't meet with your family. Maybe you're going to be home alone. Um, maybe it's just going to be different for you. But I'll tell you, what doesn't change is Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's a life changer. So this Christmas, know that this life-changing Christ is in your heart and your life. And uh, there's nothing that you can't get through. And that's the message we want to pass on to the world. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. You can still have the best Christmas ever. It's not too late. So if you've been miserable up to this point, you get a new start when you walk out. Okay, You get a new start. It's all starting over. Remember, your life has changed with Jesus Christ. Well, we sort of was trying to reflect um, during Advent uh, at our church. We were doing the journey. We were looking about how we all take journeys in life, you know, and uh, how Mary was taking a journey in life. And when God spoke to her through an angel, Gabriel, it changed her whole direction of her life, you know. And then Joseph, he's on a journey of life, and his whole direction in life was changed. When he found out his girlfriend was going to have a baby conceived by the Holy Spirit, and uh, this baby would be the Son of God, that would be the Savior of the world. And so... There were journeys, like you and I are on a journey right now. Well, I thought maybe we should um, look at the journey. One of the first journeys we looked at for Mary after she went and saw Elizabeth was that they, uh, Joseph and Mary had to go to the city of David, Bethlehem, to register for the census. And so I thought we would just reflect on that a little bit because we're not that far from Bethlehem. stars just a simple man and wife somewhere in the dark his words cut the silent night take my hand for the child that you carry is God's own and though it seems the road is long we're not that far from Bethlehem, where all our hope and joy begins, for in our hearts we'll cherish Him when 
not that far from used to go to Washington Crossing State Park for 4th of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day. And uh, we lived in Trevo's, and this was so far away to me as a kid because we're going to meet all our cousins. We're going to meet us there. From, they were from Philly. And I can remember numerous times on the way up saying, are we almost there yet? Is it much further, Dad? And, you know, he gave me some nice, respectable answer like, shut up, Norm. Because um, I keep asking, are we almost there yet? And I imagine when they were making that trip to Bethlehem, imagine if Mary kept saying to Joseph, are we almost there yet? And Joseph said, five more days, four more days. I remember when I used to drive the bus for the youth group um, and we'd go places. Um, they'd say, are we almost there and I'd say, no matter where we were, five more minutes. <laughs> the five more minutes will be there, you know. Well, 10-day trip with her being pregnant, maybe nine. Half of that, um, usually if, if someone wasn't pregnant, traveling. But they got to Bethlehem. Wasn't that much further. They got there. No room in the inn. Mary gave birth to a son. And there was this baby boy. And I wonder, as only a mother giving birth can know that feeling, um, when she looked at him, what, what she thought, like, you know, maybe it's like looking at him and saying, maybe you'll be president of the United States one day. That would be a disaster, wouldn't it? But maybe you'd be, maybe I wonder if she looked at him knowing he was the son of God, if she knew that he would heal people, that she knew he would walk on water. I, I, I wonder if she knew that when she looked at her little baby. Well, um, I wonder what Mary knew. I wonder what she knew.
Did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, and the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the That your baby boy will one day rule the nations. Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? This sleeping child you're holding is the grave. the journeys and uh, we said during Advent in church that the ultimate journey was the journey that Jesus Christ made living in heaven God deciding to send his son down to earth in his journey being born lived did miracles walked on water healed the sick did one miracle after another. He came to seek and to save the lost. And then, ultimately, as we said, his journey on earth ended bodily with his mother at the foot of the cross. And so we went from the cradle to the shadow of the cross. And even though he died, he rose from the dead and lives, lives in heaven once again. And so the journey that Jesus took was a tough one, but he did what he had to do, and it led him to the cross and his mother to the shadow of the cross. of a cross 
just a cradle in the shadow of a cross Little Jesus Born in a manger Just a cradle in the shadow Of a cross God looked down upon his son. Twas the night that God looked down upon his son. Little son Jesus. Was the night that God looked down upon his son? How the shepherd lads were bending the knee, and how the little lambs were. And so Jesus Christ made the ultimate journey from heaven to earth to heaven. And in that process, he came and Mary was used, and Joseph was used, and their traveling lives, their journey was used. And so I want to remind you today that you are on a journey in life and you're traveling and traveling and God wants to use you. God wants to change your life. God wants to fill you because you see, this baby changes everything. The gospel changes everything. And so our lives are changed. And then we are to take that Christ that has changed our lives into the world and let other people know. One of the 
exciting scriptures says that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and what happens is um, he touches our hearts and lives and when um, when he comes our way um, he is the light and so we see the Christ candle here of the light of the world and so we want to come and uh, we want to receive our lights if you'll get out your candles and uh, We'll take the light from the Christ candle. And then we'll pass this light on. As we pass this light on, the light of Christ spreads. of the world so that light comes to our hearts and lives and you notice uh, when your candle is lit uh, your face takes on form you you take on a new look um, I recognize you a little bit more um, and uh, you also sort of brighten the corner where you are because you're a person or a people the the baby the light of the world changed your life and changes everything and so our commission this christmas is to know this baby this baby called jesus christ the messiah to receive him into our hearts and our lives and then to spread him to those around us and to those around us and keep spreading and telling the world most certainly about jesus christ he is truly the light of the world, and he's truly changed our lives. And uh, with him, there's nothing you can't do or beat or overcome. I am convinced of that. He is the light of the world. Let us reverently stand, please. Let us sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart, heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature. Sing, lift your candle high. He rules the world. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love.
light of the world and we blow the light out here but that light still is a flame in our hearts and lives i know it's a different christmas go home leave this place have a different christmas tomorrow but remember the baby changes everything the gospel changes everything the cross changes everything and and it will help you to overcome anything go with the blessing of god amen merry christmas Thank you.